In a column for The Athletic, National College football writer Andy Staples proposed an idea, not a revolutionary idea, not a new idea, but an idea that I think is going to get traction as we get closer and closer to the end of the Big 12 television deal and the Pac-12 television deal, and as we continue to watch the SEC dwarf all other leagues when it comes to revenue, it is that the Big 12 should gut the Pac-12 the way that the Pac-12 tried to gut the Big 12 almost 10 years ago. You'll remember that when conference realignment happened, Colorado left the Big 12 to join the Pac-12. Nebraska left the Big 12 to join the Big 10. Missouri left the Big 12 to join the SEC along with Texas A&M. And a 12-team league became a 10-team league that added teams like West Virginia, which hasn't carried its weight, is not a geographical fit. We don't really understand it. We don't particularly enjoy it. And Texas Christian, which is a geographical fit, but does not carry the kind of prestige or promise that you would like to see from a Power 5 team. That said, they got snubbed out of a college football playoff spot years ago in large part because they're TCU. They are not USC. And that's on the list of schools for which Staples suggested the Big 12 should poach. Rather than blowing up the Big 12, which I think is really on the table still, he's proposing that the Big 12 and its commissioner, Bob Bowlesby, get sack enough to go and get UCLA, USC, Oregon, Washington, maybe even Arizona and Arizona State. Go from the Big 12 to the Big 16, right? I like this for a number of reasons, but there are other reasons why I don't like it. The reasons that I do like it include Arizona as a fertile recruiting ground for a college football talent. B. John Robinson just signed with the University of Texas after being a silent commit with Ohio State for some time, and he has the capacity to be a program changer for a Texas team that has underperformed, at the very least, its recruiting ranking, if not everybody else's expectations, Staples is included. B. John Robinson had three 2,000-yard rushing seasons and is a five-star tailback. Spencer Rattler also comes from Arizona, five-star quarterback, the heir apparent to the quarterback kingdom that is Oklahoma, and already, without actually having started a game, is being mentioned as a top-five quarterback in college football. You also get Jake Smith, who went to Texas, and you also get Saguaro, which just sent Keely Ringo to Georgia as the top cornerback in the 2020 class. Elias Ricks is right over there in that LA region, come out of modern day, ends up at IMG, and then to LSU. You could go into these Los Angeles recruiting areas that are such fertile college football grounds. Get guys from California like Justin Flo that ends up at Oregon, right? And you continue to recruit these areas that, yes, places like Oklahoma can go get because they have a national footprint. But perhaps you open it up to another place like Iowa State, where they can go in there closer geographically than Oklahoma, closer geographically than Texas, and go win kids. The same way that Iowa would love to be able to do that and tell them that they're going to be able to compete in their league, but they're not. I like this because it also cripples the Pac-12, but... That's much more about revenge than it is about what's good for the league, right? What's good for the Big 12 is whatever is going to get it into the same stratosphere because that's the difference right now between it and the SEC. With the SEC, even adding Texas A&M and Missouri, they still print money. As long as they continue to print money, they're going to be able to, one, out-recruit the Big 12, and two, continue to lord over this thing called the college football playoff, which I am against and I have been against for some time because I'm not for national invitational for a college football national championship. I want everybody to, that should be in to get an opportunity. And if we end up with an 8-5 team that's going to woe all the way, I'm good with that. I want a Leicester City before I die in college football. But I'm not going to get one as long as things stand as they are. The SEC is going to make... Bukus of money just by telling CBS to stick it, go do a deal with ESPN and Disney because Disney is the largest multinational corporation in the world. I get Bob Iger stepping down, but he's leaving it in really great shape. Jimmy Pataro is making clear that college football is very important to the business model of ESPN. CBS already has 
March Madness. They're going to make a bunch of money. The NCAA makes a billion dollars a year from that tournament annually. Perhaps they're not really as interested as you might think, in, at, especially when you get into taking into account they just paid $17 million to Tony Romo. And you know that they want to lord over the NFL. They keep lording over the NFL and they keep pushing out ESPN with your little piddly Monday Night Football. NBC gets to keep Sunday Night Football, but I think somebody's going to make a play for that even though that broadcast is excellent. And Fox is going to continue to try to claw with things like the Super Bowl. But if you want to put some distance between yourself and others, you could do that by going to get the rights to a league that expands to 16. Fox Sports already has some of the rights to this, as does ESPN to a degree. I would be shocked if they did not try to facilitate such a thing because that's what happened in the 80s when we saw conference realignment. We saw the Southwest Conference get broken up in large part because we had executives go to guys like Chuck Ninus and say, hey, look, these other teams in your conference, they aren't carrying their weight. I want you to re-up with teams like Oklahoma. I want you to re-up and try to get some really great rivalries going in here that people want to watch on television. You know what people want to watch on television? Oklahoma versus USC annually. That's a great game. Texas versus USC annually. That's a great game. Oregon versus Texas. That's a great game. Oregon versus Oklahoma. 2006 lives on forever at the University of Oklahoma. Understanding that Arizona State would also have to travel to West Virginia, that means you have a national footprint in the way that the SEC just simply will not. The Big Ten goes as far west as Iowa. Then what are we talking about? What if the Big 12, let's call it the Big 16, is able to be the first conference that is truly a national conference, that is truly a super league? And not only that, you have more entrance into things like the NFL scouting combine. So you don't have to hear me say the SEC had 93 invites to the national, or excuse me, to the National Football League scouting combine. And The Big 12 had like 29. You don't have to hear that anymore. You can hear maybe 150 from one league. What if that was your league? What if you were a part of a league that was built entirely with the purpose of unseating the SEC as the most dominant league in college football? Would your coaching talent also be better? We're talking about the SEC in a year where the SEC West is a murderer's row of coaches. It could be a league unto itself and probably still make four of six bowl games, right? I I genuinely believe that. If the Big 12 makes six bowl games with 12 teams or with 10 teams, excuse me. See, I did it. They make six bowl games with 10 teams. We're all happy about it. What if that was the bare minimum? It also gets to Texas and its Longhorn Network, which also crippled some earning potential for this league because Texas got to be greedy and selfish. And now not only are they greedy and selfish, but that network doesn't work. It's sustained by the Entertainment Sports Programming Network. It's not sustained by the University of Texas. The University of Oklahoma also has its third-tier rights, and they basically turn it into their own in-house product. Okay. But at the very least, we can find it on cable. I like this because we're also entering an age where there are more places to consume more content than there ever have been before. Podcast, yes. Netflix, of course. Amazon Prime. Google Play. YouTube. You understand the value of of all of your individual properties now. Now, what is the value of each of your individual brands? Because when we talk about the Pac-12, right now we're talking about perhaps three brands, Oregon, USC, and Washington. The rest are really not even in the conversation, whereas in the Big 12, you're talking about two brands, Oklahoma and Texas. What if you could add three more to that group? What if you could add their rival to that group as well? What if you actually get to play the same sort of schedule where you get to pick and choose every 10 years who you're going to play, like Alabama and South Carolina can go 10 years without playing each other, and it'd be a thing when you do go play. Now, as a college football fan, I want to see everybody play everybody. But if you're rooting for the Big 12 to exist, 
I think the Big 16 is a good way to go, and I think we're closer to that. If you are not rooting for the Big 12 to exist, then we're really talking about three leagues here. We're talking about the Big 10, the SEC, and the ACC. Mostly on the strength of what Clemson is able to do or not able to do, and on the strength of hoping that Florida State gets back to good. Virginia keeps making orange bowls, those sorts of things, right? But, going from five to three also means the American is on its way up. Because last year, we had a great argument for the American being the fifth best league in all of college football with its ten leagues. If you want to keep people at bay, cool. Do the Big 16. If you want to do what's good for you, as in University of Oklahoma or University of Texas, break it up. Either way, something's got to give because the Pac-12 is slowly but surely about to become Rome on fire.